nostalgia, memories, growing up in Central Florida in the 1990s. What a bunch of sappy crap. It's the Sappy Crap Podcast. Starring Steve Bauman and Jarman Day. Welcome to the Sappy Crap Podcast, where the names are changed, but the stories are real. I'm Jarman. And I'm Steve. That's right. The stories are real, or at least how our dusty brains have kept them all these years. At this point, they're just old, faded VHSs that are getting fuzzy around the edges. Oh, man. Or VHSC or 8mm or all these different oh, formats. <laughs> because today, guys, we are talking about uh, old films that Steve and I created while back we were in school growing up elementary to middle school to high school we made a lot of movies growing up we were little filmmakers yeah. it started out as simply fun but then german and i realized that we could get out of doing a lot of stuff oh yeah including all sorts of schoolwork if we just made funny movies that made teachers laugh and, and yeah. boy did we <laughs> and now that i've my sister's been a teacher and my girlfriend is a teacher i realized that they really were just looking for kids to make their jobs easier. And we kind of were doing that by giving them a project that made their job a little more fun. Um, we were still doing the research for the projects we were doing, uh, but we would just make videos for it instead of and actually it was equivalent, yeah. if not more work. Yeah. In most cases, like more hours put in to make it happen. <laughs> All the video editing and the, and the setting up the shots and writing the scripts. Yeah, we, we did more work than making like a book report or a, a a PowerPoint presentation or something. Yeah, we did a lot of work. <laughs> but I think we take it back to where it began. Mm -hmm. uh, before I met Steve, way back in the third grade, because we went in the, what, fifth grade, I believe? Fifth. Yeah. Yeah. Fifth. So in the third grade, I met a guy named Thomas. I'm not going to change his name because it's nothing negative. It's fine. And him and I started making movies together in the third grade when I moved to a new school uh, after I left the Casey Anthony school. And uh, we started making something with my friend Tony Dow, uh, who's out there in California now, I believe. Um, and it was called Kabuki Man. We made these short films where our friend Tony, who is a, um, a, a guy from Hong Kong, uh, transplanted to the United States, and he, we made these uh, kung fu movies. And once I was not so much friends with uh, Thomas anymore, uh, Steve came in the picture, and we started making movies uh, with Kabuki Man continuing. The story of this this, this karate man who would, would um, have these chronicles of stories were now being filmed at Steve's house. And one event, eventful day, something happened, Steve. <laughs> what happened in one of those films? Well, I think we'd be doing a disservice if we didn't talk about Kabuki Man because it really was a funny premise. It was. What was the premise? Explain it and more. I, and I, I was only there for the sequel, but I remember the, the original one vividly. Uh, Tony was like this wimpy kid. You guys filmed at the high school, which was kind of a big deal. Yeah. You were like in sixth grade or fifth grade or something like that. Uh, <laughs> you filmed at the high school and Tony was getting picked on by some big mean bully played by Thomas mm -hmm. and got beat up. And then all of a sudden there was like a ninja sensei there for some reason <laughs> played by also Thomas. If yeah, I, remember I think so. Yes. <laughs> or you were the bully. I, I was so the, the bully. Then Thomas the was the sensei. Was the yeah. sensei. I was the bully. And they're, yeah. they're practicing moves and he's got to find his like his inner power. And he finally finds it when he does his voice changed to like a bad Japanese dub. Which I think was me or my voice, probably. You were behind the camera. <laughs> yeah. What happened to my voice? Um, and <laughs> I remember Thomas's master character died when they were doing the thing from Karate Kid 3 or 2, where they're standing on a pedestal and raising their hands side to side and doing that and doing basically Tai Chi. Tai Chi, and yeah. Then, and then Tony's character accidentally knocks Thomas's down and kills him. <laughs> Uh, and then Tony's character, Kabuki Man now, goes and gets revenge on the bully. And I remember it ended with him wrapping a payphone cord around your neck. And Thomas was working the camera and made like a cracking sound by like breaking a pencil or something. Yes, yes. It ended with him snapping your neck. Because <laughs> we had payphones back then. <laughs> Uh, so this, this masterpiece was already in the can by the time I came into the picture. Um, you got a good memory, man. My God. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
And this had, and then this was right during the time sixth to early seventh grade where Jarman and I kind of lost touch with each other because we just didn't have any classes together in middle school. Mm. It was that easy back then. Finally, seventh grade, you and I had a math class together and kind of reconnected. And then that's how Kabuki Man 2 was born. Because <laughs> you and Thomas had fallen out for some reason. He he fell in with the popular kids and he he thought he was cooler than me. So that kind of happened. But in, in his defense, he was cooler than both of us. But that's not the point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at the time, yes. And so we filmed at my place. And the premise for Kabuki Man 2 is Kabuki Man had become this like international star or hero and had rested on his laurels and let go of his training. Ah, yes. And a new challenger played by me in like (laughs) hockey pads or something shows up (laughs) and beats him real bad and then kicks him out of his own house and takes over. Mm. He goes on a journey of self-discovery. He reunites with his own master in the afterlife who tells him to remember who he is. He gets his dubbed voice back. Yes. <laughs> and then goes to retake his house and reclaim what is his. I remember him and saying, what happened to my voice? <laughs> it's very what, quietly. What, happened to, what happened to my voice? And then all of a sudden his voice comes back. Yeah. Um, so he goes to sneak in. There's a guard at the door, which I think was played by you. Probably. There's he only the three of us. The, he <laughs> reaches over the gate and snaps your neck. Another <laughs> next neck. And then we did a, a shot that took like, 15 takes to get right where the idea was he was going to jump into the air and then we were going to go to the other side of the fence and film him landing yes like he did a real quick like something we saw in the movie because that's all we were doing was copying things we see of course uh he does this comes in and then my character is like lounging by the pool and starts laughing at him and sit and like is about to sick his men on him because i remember we had the next shot planned where we were going to stationary the camera and then have us in different masks run out of a bush. Uh, and we were going to cut it in such a way that it looked like there were like 10 guys. <laughs> Very ambitious. This was the, we had the next shot planned. And then Kabuki man enters. I laugh at him and say, get him boys or something. And German's foot slips and collides into my swimming pool. <laughs> camera in hand. German in that moment of panic has this instinct that he throws the camera, <laughs> hucks the camera, which lands on like solid rock. I thought it landed in your pool. Place. No. Oh, I got that, that it. That was sort of the that was sort of the the clincher in all of it is that you were dry from the waist up. If you had held on to the camera, it would have been fine. Mm. But so I fell in the shallow just, end. It, Right in that moment, there was no control of the situation. It just was happening the way it was going to happen. And your camera got stuck on night mode, night measure mode. And then Scott said we couldn't use it anymore. Or my stepdad, yeah. And by the way, those those that particular camera was recalled because that the night vision mode in those cameras was so good that I could see through clothing in night vision. Yep. So they actually recalled it and had to change and adjust some of the features because you could see through people's clothing, at least the top layer. Um, so women in bras or they weren't wearing a bra, you could see through their shirt. Um, but yeah, that was a thing. And also, I need to, need to express that that instinct to where I throw something when I freak out has moved on to this day because most recently uh, during my this past Halloween, we had a one shot for my uh, D&D group and they came over to my house And one of the players in our group was so awesome. She made an entire model of the whole map of our the the mansion that was going to be for the one shot. So she made a whole model of the entire map of the mansion and she brings over. It's in two large, like two by two foot pieces um, with like um, foam and uh, wood and all these different little miniatures that are on there glued on. And she hands it to me and I said, okay, I got the one piece. And so I go up to my door and as I'm opening the door, a gecko falls on top of the, of the, um, of the model and starts running towards my face from the model. And so I just throw it. (laughs) My first instinct (laughs) is to throw it. (laughs) So she had worked on this all week. She just got, she had just gotten let go from her job. So she had a lot of time to work on this model hours and hours and hours and i throw it because this gecko lands right on just right towards my face so just like when i was a child throwing that camera 
I just threw the model. Luckily, it fell to the ground, and it was, uh, but it was all salvageable. We could put the pieces back together. It was not destroyed. Man, you carried my wedding cake, dude. Uh, yeah, and I'm glad I didn't throw that. That could have gone terribly. <laughs> it could have gone terribly. <laughs> but anyway, we did finish that that Kabuki Man part two. Eventually, it it, it worked out um, in some yeah. form. And then, and then our movie making career kind of came to a halt. Until I got a camera in the ninth grade, I think, mm. or maybe eighth grade. And then we picked it back up. And then that's where we made the one. I'm not going to say that made us famous, but that got us notoriety and made us kind of realize, oh, my God, we could get out of a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and that was for eighth grade science, which I'm not even sure had a theme. Like It wasn't even biology or it was just science back then. Weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And. Our class was doing this cool new thing where you solved a crime, like a murder, mm. with science. And it was this new thing, creative learning process in the classroom, where we had to analyze handwriting. Well, other people did. We didn't have to do crap because we were filming for two days. Oh, but yeah, actually, you're jumping ahead because the Wait, reason. what did I forget? The reason we got to do that in the first oh, place. Sodium. Yes. Because before we got Man. to do this, so first we had a project on the elements um, and uh, or not the elements. What is it? Uh, a composite periodic table. Periodic table. And so we got the element of sodium. Me and um, that, sodium is not an element. It's like it's it's like a combination of elements. What is it called? What combination? Um, isn't it sodium? No, yeah. nah. That's literally it's. it's oh, not, it's just sodium. You're right. Sodium. What is? Yeah, we we so basically we each get an element in the class, and now uh, Steve and I obviously partnered together, and we had to do a project on it. And so instead of doing an actual project, we decided like a poster and a something, yeah, you know, a presentation. Oh, that <laughs> we're making a movie. So we made a nineteen, um, basically what like nineteen thirties, nineteen thirties. The the bomb movies of the nineteen thirties were basically the kids were uh, hiding under their cover desks, films. duck and cover films. We did that for sodium. And so I was the narrator and Steve was the actor basically playing this kid who was like talking about sodium. And um, we were talking hearing from the narrator actual <laughs> facts because we had to have X amount of scientific facts. And we can link to this in film the actually in the description. We'll link to it so you guys can see this uh, this film if you want to. It's ridiculous. It, it featured me eating poisoned food. And injecting sodium directly into my bloodstream, and talking and about how sodium can turn into salt with um, with chlorine, and um, so basically and dropping the, a hammer on my toe. And it's I actually jump very up and down cute. And scream, and it's very all in sepia tones. It's very funny for that time period. It took forever to render those effects back we then. End credits. Oh yeah, um, and that that video got the attention of our teacher. Um, a wonderful Miss Elder. Hope she's still around doing teaching somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. And so when they decided to do a feature on our teacher because she was doing a crime scene. Um, like Orange a, County Public School Television. Yeah. Orange County Public School Television was doing a, a feature on her doing this crime scene investigation unit in her class because it's very unique for a science class in middle school to do that. And because we were already involved doing that video presentation, she was like, oh, they could probably help out with this. And I don't remember much more beyond that, how we got into that gig for Orange County Public Schools television. It was basically so, PBS. <laughs> I remember I got called to her classroom off, like off schedule, mm. you know, a different period or like first thing when I got her in the classroom, I was like, oh my God, I, I don't know what I did, but I'm in trouble. Ah, uh, of course you are. And so we walked down there. I remember it was at the very far end of campus, like down down like in the back parking lot area i wander down there and i walk in and you're sitting there and i go oh my god what did we do we're both in trouble we're both in so much trouble and i sat down and i remember she told us she's like we're the first school in the state to do this thing and orange county public school wants to do a feature on it and they said they needed two actors kid and actors, i recommended yeah. you guys do you is that something you guys want to do and we went y yeah and she's like it'll probably be like two days of filming during x periods we were so we were taken out of classes it was awesome i need you to get a sign off thing from your parents and so then i remember we we had one phone call with the who i think it was the producer at the time and i remember he vaguely told us to like write something up and we had no idea what that meant they did not tell us how long this thing was going to be how much we should confine it nothing 
They and just told like two he's telling middle school kids write something yeah, up. Middle school kids to write something up. So you and I end up writing like a four page script. <laughs> of course. That ends did. up getting cut to like ten lines. And there are a few of our original lines in the thing. One of them, if you link it, if you link the video, uh I will. Was you having the revelation of so what does that mean? You went, she was left handed. Uh I remember that was one of our original lines in the script. Oh, really? Because <laughs> the idea was that she committed suicide, but the gunshot was on the wrong side. Mm. But you just didn't. But you were the dumb guy. Like, that was the whole premise was you were the dumb guy. <laughs> yeah, I was the main detective, but you're the guy who actually solves all the crimes. It's kind of like that. Um, Yeah. Like it, duck man, kind of. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we come up with this huge thing. The producer shows up with a real cameraman, real crew. And I remember German and I went out and got fake facial hair. This is one of the things I look back on and I go, what were we thinking? I don't know. Eighth we grade. Went, we went to like an actual costume shop and you got like a pencil, pencil thin mustache. Yeah. And I got a chin beard. A chin beard. For we some reason. Them on and the guy showed up. If we had him on and they were like, you got to take that mustache off. And so you took it off and they didn't say anything about my chin beard. So I got to keep this giant chin beard. Which you'll be able to see in the links in the description of this you'll video. You'll see this. It's so good. <laughs> Giant chin beard. Um, and it was just all about, and then it was classic guy noir style. Yeah. Uh, German was the cut cut detective and Lo- Lois MacArthur, who, who was recently found dead. And, she wanted to be an actor. And we got to, to go and kind of act some of the activities that the class was actually doing, but we didn't actually have to do them. Right. We never did. <laughs> we never did the assignment. <laughs> we never did. So I remember you and I, this is when we realized. So we do two or three days of filming for a couple periods each day mm-hmm. um, with different classes, because I remember the class we were in wasn't even the class that was selected for the video. Oh, yeah. It was a different period. That was, it was a different being period filmed. that got chosen, but we got picked out of our class. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So we missed other classes, we didn't have to do classes, the assignment. And we got to like snub the other people in our own class. It was so good. <laughs> and I remember you and I didn't really understand how she was going to grade us or what we were expected to do. And I remember at the end, you and I both just got A's. Yeah. For that whole thing without doing anything. Any of the assignment. We did a lot of work, though, planning and acting <laughs> and but but we didn't do any of the paperwork. We didn't have to do any of the activities. Nothing. And I think that's when it clicked for you and I. We're like, oh, this could be real good for us, dude. Oh, yeah. And I did so many, even videos without you. I did plen- plenty of videos uh, for projects in the future because. Well, I, have- I would come in and help you. I would be the cameraman for you. Right. For other projects. I'd come and fill in roles. Um, and then that actually led to me getting an audition for OCP. Uh, OCPS television, their hosting job for their television show, which I did not get, but then they called me back and I did five or six spots over the next two years for them. Oh, I don't remember that. Yeah. I went in and I like read the sunshine state books for that year. Or uh, I did, I was part of the like teacher of the year announcements for orange County public schools. Nice. And I got to read bios and then do voiceover kind of work. So I'd got to do that for another two years after that. I didn't get any of those opportunities. <laughs> no. <laughs> the chin beer, man. That's what did it. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, that's not higher. The dumb guy. <laughs> oh, that's so hilarious. That's the one we just realized. And then that led to a lot of other videos um, that, as I said, got us out of stuff or got us out of having to make a poster. Yeah. And then we also um, made videos for fun in general. Like we liked just making movies and acting in them and, and, I think one of our most iconic ones that we just our family and friends like the most is probably the take on me music video. Yes. Which we have to talk about, which was literally born out of it was really rainy and we couldn't go outside and do anything. (laughs) Yeah. That is literally like boredom is what made that. And we ended up doing a take on me music video, which featured me with blue hair. Yep. Just for the record, your girlfriend at the time. Christina. Me getting hit in the groin with a baseball bat. For so the if, high notes. If you guys know the take on me song, 
Take on me, take on me, take me on. It gets real In a high. day or, and then the last note too, he, we basically have uh, my ex at the time, my girlfriend at the time, hitting him with a bat in the crotch so he can hit the high note every time. Too. <laughs> and it's, it's, I hit myself in the crotch. Um, and that's pretty much as far as the conceit goes. It's, But it's also con- it explores around the weird house that I lived in at the time. Yeah. The, I saw the backyard and I was like, man, that's right. That What a weird backyard. <laughs> It's and like then at one point I rolled park. through the hammock, but it went way faster than I thought. And I remember I landed really hard and like hurt my ass real bad. Also be linked in the comments if you guys want to. St- but I stood back, popped back <laughs> up and went right back into the song. Feel free to check out that in the comments. You can watch it's that video be, as well. a lot of embarrassing <laughs> high school stuff you guys are going to get to see. Oh, here. and that video has been re- reposted like three times because they kept flagging it for um, copyright infringement because of the song. But now YouTube has gotten their shit together. And so when they hear a song, they actually just give the money to the artist um, instead of taking the video down so it's it's now up permanently so you, you, nice. you can see the video yeah it's there and then there's another one i kind of remember because as we got later in high school and we were doing more theater stuff this ebbed down yeah we had less time you know we just had less time and we were artistically involved in other things we were pouring ourselves artistically in other stuff oh of course yes um serious artists so the two I remember, so I love you say that. No, I just talk about, there was one where I think I ran camera for you and I maybe had one small role, mm. but it was for a history class you were in and you guys had to do like, it was common mythological British heroes. And I remember somebody was King Arthur oh. and you, I think were Robin Hood. And the only reason I remember any of this is because you at one point got to shoot a fake bow and said, I'm going to find some booty because, <laughs> because we had realized that booty was like a word for treasure. Oh, we were so excited about that. And that was so exciting. <laughs> but literally of all the things I remember our buddy Ted in a really goofy night outfit. And I remember you shooting a fake bow and saying, I'm going to find some booty that I, I remember that explicitly, but I don't have a copy of that video. I don't know where that is. No, there were a lot of these films where, like, after we turned them in, that was it. I don't like, know where that. Yeah, they're just grade. gone to the ether of time. I don't know and where then, that is. And then this one, I don't know if you remember. This is another one where I, I ran camera, and it was for maybe an English class, and we did it in black and white, and we did it in like a German noir kind of style where you were in a black turtleneck and it might've been about a Holocaust book. Oh God. And realistic. Looking back, I'm like, Oh, that was so very tasteless <laughs> off base. And we were clearly, once again, everything we did was trying to copy something, mm-hmm. a style or something. We were clearly trying to copy something, a style or something. And I just, I look back and I go, yeah, that one might've been too much. I remember looking at you in a mirror and you were like, and I cry and you brought your finger down your face and then you turned off a light bulb. Oh, that's a a bell too. I wish I had a video of that. And then you like duck down under the mirror. Yeah. That Um, that sounds very familiar, but yeah, it was, it was definitely about some like dark literature kind of thing that we probably shouldn't have been touching. (laughs) No. Yeah. (laughs) Especially an insensitive way with two white males. (laughs) Two the whitest guys, just the whitest, (laughs) the whitest. (laughs) <laughs> um but yeah we made uh, a ton of them i wish i remembered more of them yeah but but man well the we, we one that some, i remember a lot is uh me and my uh, stepbrother uh and you we made a uh, a dramatic recreation of a story that is told in an eddie murphy film yes Oh my God! I'm forgetting the film that it's in. What film uh, is Coming to America? Coming to America. Thank you. It was, wait, wait, waiter, taste the soup. And Peter also had a chin beard. <laughs> yeah, he also had a chin beard. It might <laughs> have been the same chin beard prosthetic that we just saved for later <laughs> on. <laughs> it may have been. Uh, but basically, if you watch Coming to America, there's the 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 uh, Eddie Murphy plays one of the uh, people in the barber shop who's a Jewish guy, an old white Jewish guy, uh, talking about a, telling a waiter to taste the soup. And the waiter's like confused why he has to taste the soup until finally the guy, you know, tells him, oh, well, where's the spoon? I'll taste the soup. He's like, uh-huh, because the whole problem was 
he had no spoon. And so we decided to recreate that. This is a very well done video in our, my opinion for us at that well, age. And it was supposed to be the first part of many, because then you at the very end showed up as like the host of the twilight zone, like Rod Serling. Yeah, exactly. You showed up at Rod Serling right at the end. And I remember we had a really clever camera cut mm-hmm. where suddenly you were walking in frame. It like pans over and all of a sudden I'm there. I'm like, this is a, right. a new story. We're what you just about. witnessed. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we never did more with it. I don't know if you ever actually felt the rest. <laughs> no. <laughs> but the whole soup gig, the whole soup gag is there and you're the waiter. And my stepbrother, Peter, is is uh, the soup guy. And uh, yeah. it's it's good. It's And that'll be linked in the description below. So check it out. We filmed that gorilla style in downtown Winter Park in like a private little courtyard oh, yeah. for some business that we definitely weren't supposed to be in it was just after and hours and they're whole, closed it was just this whole like all right we gotta we gotta hurry up we gotta finish quick someone's gonna figure out we're here and come yell at us mm. <laughs> but we made it happen it worked we did we did oh yeah it's just it, it, we were we're filmmakers at heart i think it's just it's true that's right deep down we we're always copying something or something <laughs> And on that note, I will say I, I did just completely film a uh, a, a new short film We're coming out soon. It's a sil- the rest is silence, a Silence of the Lambs uh, Shakespeare parody, not parody, but uh, Shakespeare rendition of Silence of the Lambs. It's very serious. It's a horror film. Uh, but yeah, that'll be coming out soon. I, I have to plug it. I have to because I work so damn hard and it. I mean, it's coming out soon. Talking about movies, it's too good. Yeah, it's yeah, good. It's, it's happening. But I also went to film school eventually, but I didn't do film. I, I've done voice acting. But uh, Steve and I, I think we're ahead of our time back then. Elementary, middle school, high school. We were doing this shit early days. Oh, my God. I think about what if we had the camera that I have on my phone now and oh my the God. editing software that I have on my That's phone ridiculous. now. That's ridiculous. We yeah. We could have we would have made 10 times as many movies. We the would software have made four we were using in an afternoon and the cameras we were using were on actual like tapes. And then we had to in, we had to like uh, ingest them onto the onto the software. That you, was, had to, you had to get a special video card for your parents computer. And then you, I remember you and I struggled for like a week to figure out how to get the drivers installed. Oh, yeah. So that the, the motherboard would recognize that video cards so that we could plug the camera into it. And then finally, when I got mine. My camera was like had one of the first firewire outputs. Yes. And then we got my camera after that in high school, the the big camera. Remember that one? Yeah. So like we we went from my bad one to your upgrade, your upgrade. And then we had my upgrade. And then the firewire is a big deal. And then we had, I think, you lead video editor was the name of the one we used a lot, I think. Yeah, um, but yeah, that the, sounds right. But the software took so long and we did a, a, a green screen stuff, which we'll link in the description below as well. It was but it took so There's gonna long. There's going to be a lot of links, folks. It took so long to do anything. It just was forever. <laughs> so it was a lot of work. I remember, we, I remember we would get we would wait like three hours for a two minute thing to render and it would come out and something would be wrong. We had to redo it. Yeah, it would be choppy or the sound. We Oh, we forgot to put that transition in and we would have to redo it and re-render and re-output <laughs> the entire thing. Oh, and I just re- render this uh, an hour and 15 minute film that I just uh, had to finish 13 hours, but which is a long ass time. But for a whole film, whereas you and I are probably right. waiting 13 hours for probably 20 minutes or something. Oh, yeah. Then. Like none of our projects exceeded five minutes, realistically. <laughs> and, and they had very few uh, effects or anything like that compared to what I just put in that render. So it's just technology has gone a long way since then. It's uh, it was tough. We did more work than those kids doing those little poster presentations, I think. Yes. In many cases, yes. <laughs> but it was a way for us to bearably pass the time, do something that made us feel like we were doing something different and not terrible. Yeah. And got and got us some pretty good grades. And also, if you guys want to see us on video in the modern times, we have some video episodes of uh, a play on nerds where Steve and I have met in person. Uh, I think there's two of those up there somewhere. We in the- ha- Did we have video of that? We have video of one of them, I think. Oh, the one in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. You're absolutely yes. right. That's wow. like the only time Steve and I've been on video in the last like 15 years so <laughs> yeah that was my dad's retirement party yeah we're old so it's only toledo <laughs> 
But anyways, uh, that's a uh, if you guys I'm so sorry if you're bored by that, but you'll be entertained by these ridiculous videos you'll see in the description it below. It be worth it if you pause where we're talking about it and go and find the link and watch the thing. Yeah, because they're they're ridiculous. It'll be worth it. And my mom is going to go, oh, my God, I haven't seen these in years. <laughs> Absolutely. But thanks for joining us. That wraps up this episode of the Sappy Crap Podcast. Uh, join us next time when we talk about something so deep that we don't even know what it is yet. That's true. Uh, thanks for joining us on this uh, delightful stumble down memory lane because it was a stumble. And, and don't forget, the good old days may have actually been okay. Yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> This podcast was brought to you by A Play on Nerds. <laughs>